This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Toyota and Nissan have two very different stories to tell in the American market. Toyota is losing money in North America, while Nissan North America is saving the company. As we reported earlier this month, Toyota lost $558 million in North America last year after regularly posting profits of about $4 billion a year. Meanwhile, North America is where Nissan makes 85% of its profits. It's also the company's biggest sales region, even bigger than what it sells in Japan and China combined. We can't explain why Nissan is doing so well in the American market while Toyota is losing money, but it sure is interesting to see the difference. New York taxi drivers really got screwed. A New York Court of Appeals says they can't sue the city because it let Uber and Lyft destroy their business. Taxi drivers have to buy a license to operate a cab in New York. They call them medallions. Before Uber and Lyft showed up, a medallion cost an average of $1.3 million. But since the ride-sharing services, the value of medallions fell to about $325,000. So the cab company sued the city, claiming the city's Taxi and Limousine Commission, which hands out the medallions and regulates taxis, breached its contracts because it did not limit the number of ride-hailing cars. But the appeals court ruled that the cabbies can't sue the city because the commission never guaranteed it would protect the value of the medallions. Cab drivers would take out bank loans to buy the medallions, which they thought would keep going up in value because they always had, until Uber and Lyft showed up, that is. Rental car companies buy a lot of cars, nearly two million a year in the U.S. market, and they could represent a significant percentage of EV sales. Hertz now has 50,000 EVs in its fleet, or about 10% of its vehicles. The company expects to do 2 million EV rentals this year, which is five times more than last year, and Hertz has a lot more EVs coming its way. It ordered 100,000 from Tesla, 65,000 from Polestar, and another 175,000 from GM. But it's gonna be several years before all of those EVs enter its fleet. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Daimler is launching a new brand for medium-duty electric trucks in the U.S. called Ryzen. This is really just a rebadged version of the Fuso E-Canter, and it will be sold in Class 4 and 5 configurations. The batteries are LFP, or lithium iron phosphate, and it revealed two pack sizes, 83 and 124 kilowatt hours. Depending on the configuration, the small pack provides 75 to 110 miles of range, while the big pack is rated at 110 to 160 miles. The Ryzen trucks will be distributed by the Velocity Group, a company that sells trucks and truck parts and boasts 80 outlets worldwide. Velocity will act as a one-stop shop for customers who will start taking delivery in the fourth quarter of this year. And obviously, all these electric trucks are going to need a place to charge. So Daimler also announced it's teaming up to build an EV charging infrastructure for large commercial vehicles in the U.S. The joint venture is called Green Lane, and they're investing $650 million to install stations along busy freight routes, the first one going into Southern California. The plan also includes hydrogen refueling stations and possibly light-duty vehicle charging in the future. And speaking of EV charging, Tesla and Fastened, a Netherlands-based charging company, 
are suing for the right to install their chargers along the Autobahn in Germany. Right now, a company called Tank and Rast holds the rights to nearly all of the rest stops and gas stations along the Autobahn, which allows it to pick who gets in and where they go. Tank and Rast also claims this authority extends to EV charging and has only allowed a select number of charging operators to install stations. And as you can probably guess, Tesla and Fastened weren't one of them, so they're now suing to break up the near monopoly. This is not our usual story, but I was really impressed with the winners of a recent Stellantis design competition where 10th to 12th graders were asked to sketch a next-gen Ram EV truck. And much like today, utility is key, with add-ons for lights, tie-downs for ATVs, and the top prize went to a 12th grader who designed a reconfigurable bed that turns into stadium seating. You know, it's always cool to see what designers can come up with when there's not many limitations. And here's a car you may never, ever see. To celebrate selling the 100th version of the Supra GT4 for customer racers, Toyota is going to offer a commemorative Supra GT4 100 edition, which comes in an exclusive color and features unique front bodywork and special badging. But it's only going to build three of them, and we wouldn't be surprised if one of those is for Akio Toyota. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Citroën wants 30% of its global sales to be outside of Europe by 2025, and it's got its sights set on several developing markets. It's launching a version of the C3 Aircross, a B-size crossover, in India, Southeast Asia, and South America that comes with exclusive styling. It was developed with input from each of those markets, and it's going to make it in India and Brazil. Available as a five or seven seat model, it will be offered with features and packages tailored for each of those markets. Citroen didn't reveal what engine options are available, but the European model is offered with both gasoline and diesel engines that can be mated to manual or automatic transmissions. The new C3 Aircross goes on sale in India and Brazil later this year, in Indonesia next year. Automakers around the world are racing to develop software-defined vehicles. That's where every operation and function in a vehicle is controlled by software. It's a technology that Tesla pioneered, and now everyone else is trying to catch up. And in a fascinating move, General Motors is trying to set the standard for the software that the industry will use to develop software-defined vehicles. GM introduced an open source code called U-Protocol that can be used with any operating system as well as with any vehicle, smartphone, and cloud service. Amazingly, GM is not patenting this or even trademarking U-Protocol. It wants to offer this to the industry to speed up software development. Otherwise, it says, the industry will be stuck in an ecosystem where apps and software for each automaker require custom code that will slow everything down. And it's going to be interesting to see if others actually adopt this. Some of the best innovation in the auto industry comes from suppliers. And this new system from Mitsubishi Electric caught our eye. They call it Jabiru, and it takes navigation in ADAS to a new level. Take a look. In addition to its in-cabin capabilities, this next-gen cockpit also integrates with road-facing cameras and lasers to display road condition information valuable to the driver. The system can detect slippery roads, black ice, and other weather-related issues and show slip and grip levels using augmented reality overlays up to 25 meters ahead. Augmented reality is also used to show the driver potential hazards on the road. 
road hazard detection can highlight traffic cones, potholes, stop signs, pedestrians, and other objects in or near the path of the vehicle, giving the driver an added measure of awareness. We really like that the nav system shows you when a road is covered in black ice. That's something that we hadn't seen before. We're just showing you a fraction of what the Jabiro prototype is all about, and we'll try to show you more of that next week. But that's a wrap for this week. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.